you don't often have the comfort and the space for vulnerability, which we all understand now, right? We all understand a lot now because we've all been through something that nobody has ever gone through and survived, which is a pandemic of this proportion. So when the pandemic hit, because I live 20 minutes from Redmond, I didn't ever think digital equity was a problem. I never ever thought that kids didn't have access to the internet because of geography, topography, or location. I knew that there were places in Washington that I couldn't get signal because they're just so far, or they're just they're not in a space where like AT&T and Verizon is going to go. Like no one, I don't. I mean, Verizon barely hits Mattawa, so like I knew that there I was going to struggle if I if I got there. What I didn't know that was in April of 2020, when we shut down, we had 285,000 students that had no access to internet, hardware, laptops, or even cell phones. We have 1.1 million kids here in K through 12. And OSPI told me it was only 6,000 kids. What? And I don't know what shocked me the most, that it was only or that it was 6,000 because I at that point was an organization of four and I knew the number was different so OSPI was out there talking about 6,000 kids 6,000 kids we're gonna get 6,000 laptops and you guys remember like the laptop surge that happened like everybody was donating laptops that didn't work and like couldn't do zoom and I was just like Okay, well, all these laptops are great. Who is, he, is anybody here from Seattle? Public schools? Do you remember when Amazon gave like the 8,600 tablets, but they couldn't connect to the, the school sites and they couldn't do the learning management systems and you couldn't do Zoom and you couldn't do, like they just gave something and we're just like, here, we have hardware, but no, yeah, Amazon. No understanding of like what schools needed, what early learning sites needed, what you all needed to function as a society that shut down. So, so my team and I, we had not known how to live in a shut. I, I have a funny story. I, I think I told the advocacy team yesterday. Um, when we shut down, my husband and I had just gotten weight loss surgery together. It's not as romantic as it sounds. Um, <laughs> and we were three days post-op. So we were in my house, our house. We were, but I pay for it. Um, <laughs> we were in the house and we were like both like, okay, all right, drinking our, at that point we were drinking chicken broth. Uh, um, and he comes in and he's just like, babe. I was like, please, please, I can't. He's like, the governor has shut down the state. I was like, does that mean we get food? He's like, no, no, no. It means that we don't have to leave the house because of COVID, like Corona. Remember, it was Corona. I was just like, ooh, tequila. Um, <laughs> but he was just like, we, we have to shut down because of Corona. I was like, I don't, what does that mean? He's like, we don't have to go to our offices. We can just do everything online and by email. And I started convulsing. I was like, no, I can't. Oh my God, I've already three days post up. I haven't seen my team in forever. If you haven't, if you haven't gotten the hint, I'm extroverted. Um, <laughs> my husband is uh, introverted completely. And he, can, he comes in and he's just like, isn't that amazing? <laughs> I'm gonna be at the house for two weeks and I don't have to see anybody. I was like, two weeks? I started calling all my friends and FaceTiming with them. I was like, can we just get a group chat? And he was just like, I don't have to see or talk to anybody for two weeks. Remember when we thought this shit was gonna last for two weeks? <laughs> and um, so then, so then I he was- I became an introvert. Yeah, and then we all, we all figured out our introverted selves, right? We were just that. like, yeah, no, I still I was don't. An yeah, I, I do like keynotes on corners and stuff. People think I'm crazy. And they're just like, oh, there she is. Um, but the reason I say that is because my team transitioned pretty seamlessly. We were just like, stay home. Do you have the internet? Yes. Do you need supports? Yes. What do you need? I need a chair. I need a gaming chair with lumbar support. I was like, 
Um, this is gonna last two weeks. <laughs> so I got them the lumbar support chair. So, um, but we transitioned really quickly and we transitioned really fast and we were just like, Zoom, got it. Otter.ai, got it. LinkedIn, fixed. Meets, I don't know what the difference between Meets, Teams, and Otter and like Zoom are. I know one of them has a better emoji situation, but like that's, <laughs> that's all I know, even now. But the reality is, is that for us, it never dawned on me that my team might not know how to use a laptop. That my team would be at home with four kids that all had to be online and they had to, they had to be on Teams. Their spouse had to be on Teams and they've never done that before. So when that happened, we were just like, okay, we're okay. But then 285,000 students, right? So we were fighting with a, and, and this goes to Joel's incredibly generous um, introduction. We had a meeting with the governor's office and we insisted that we have a meeting with the governor's office because at that point, if you live in the Puget Sound, you'll remember at that point, the coronavirus was just in Kirkland. It was in one location in Kirkland. King County decided that they were going to pick up all the homeless people and quarantine them in three low income areas, Kent, White Center, and Inner Urban. And we asked them at the last in-person meeting, what was your racial equity assessment of this decision? And this is what I got, silence. And, and that's the message that I wanna give to you is that in, the man, in a moment of panic, in a moment of true um, inability to see the future for the crisis that we're dealing with now, we still have to center equity. We still have to center racial equity because all of our systems, every single one of the systems in the United States was created, and some of you heard me say this yesterday, was created towards the supremacy of one by the oppression of others. Yeah. Uh, my kid's mom is Native American and 